Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of COVID-19 Conversations with UNODC Eastern Africa. This is where we focus on advancing the debate on COVID-19 challenges and solutions within UNODC's mandate area. In this episode, we will be talking about wildlife and forest crime and what is being done in the region and today we'll be talking to experts in that field so our first speaker is javier montano who is the regional coordinator of unodc's container control and wildlife and forest crimes program and then we will be talking to john mugendi who is the head of administration of a kenya wildlife service and finally we will be talking to agnes nabuire who is the Assistant Commissioner for Enforcement with the Uganda Revenue Authority. We are extremely grateful that you're part of this conversation today. So on the first question, what is your organization's role in combating wildlife and forest crime? Thank you, Wang Boy, for having me in this show. Uh, KWS plays a very key role in combating wildlife and forest crimes. As you well know, wildlife and forest crimes are some of the leading global economic crimes we have around the globe. And Kenya Wildlife Service plays a very key role in, in combating this. And how this is done, we've undertaken forced modernization of our security teams where we've equipped them across the country to be able to combat these crimes. We've also done community-based approaches where we engage the community who are able to help us identify uh, individuals who are involved in wildlife crime. We've also adopted strategic partnerships, strategic partnerships which are very key with the UNODC, with I4 and other partners who have played a very key role to help us combat these uh, wildlife and forest crimes. Lastly, the government has been very instrumental in helping us uh, combat wildlife crime in the sense that they've given us the resources, guidance uh, to ensure that we are able to put our heads together to combat these uh, economic crimes. So uh, the Global Programme for uh, Combating Wildlife and Forest Crime uh, is an initiative uh, from the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime and uh, UNODC is part of the International Consortium on Combating Wildlife and Forest Crime which is an, uh, a consortium that is uh, formed by five uh, international organizations. Uh, this consortium has uh, various tools that have been developed to focus and fight uh, wildlife and uh, forest crimes, amongst which we have notably uh, the toolkit for doing comprehensive assessment from uh, wildlife and forest crime in the different countries, which is complemented by the um, indicator framework which is a tool that analyzes uh, 50 indicators to assess the uh, state and the effectiveness of uh, the programmatic interventions as well as the policy interventions in addressing wildlife and forest crime. Just to start with, our main role as, a, as an institution is to protect society, um, to collect revenue and to collect statistics for government and also to combat illegal um, wildlife trade and in that aspect focusing on fight against wildlife crime and uh, forest crime we've have undertaken so many uh, measures as an institution and more so the enforcement division by improving on our border controls we've deployed skilled staff that are well are conversant with the identifying wildlife in whatever forms they are presented. And also we've supported them by um, deploying high technology of scanners that will help us uh, see what is concealed in containers that are coming through and all going out. Very well. Nature is under threat because of crimes like poaching and of exploitation of natural resources. Can you talk about your efforts to prosecute wildlife and forest crimes? Uh, so on the criminal ju uh, justice uh, responses, we uh, provide an analysis and we support uh, programmatically on uh, addressing uh, legislation, uh, enforcement uh, aspects and uh, the judiciary and the prosecution of the offences, such as the uh, wildlife crime uh, scene uh, for first responders, 
uh, which has been also domesticated through local trainings that are uh, being done and local guides for uh, the wildlife authorities and they did do deliver the then they develop their own guide and they do deliver the training for the first responders with local trainers and then these officers then further disseminate this knowledge for the first responders so that they are able to appropriately secure uh, the scenes of crime uh, so that the evidence can be appropriately preserved and uh, then transmitted through uh, the uh, criminal justice uh, process uh, for the uh, further work of the investigators as well as uh, the prosecutors. Uh, further, we do develop uh, guides such as um, guides to support investigators and prosecutors which are simplified tools that bring about the uh, key offenses that are penalized in the local legislations with um, the points to prove for the offense, the elements of the offense and the type of evidence that are required including sample chart sheets for each of uh, the different offenses as well as the ancillary legislation that uh, allows to charge on other related offenses including corruption and money laundering. Uh, prosecution is very key at Kenya Wildlife Service. It's housed in our security division. We've got the office of the chief prosecutor who does case progression which is very key in management of cases and there are a couple of things which um, this office does. They are able to investigate cases uh, which is very important for us. They are also able to draft charges uh, and these charges once they are drafted they are able to be uh, analyzed and from there forwarded to the courts for further action. Now in addition to this we've got a forensic lab. This forensic lab is also used to analyze uh, some of the exhibits that ha have been um, uh, found uh, and these exhibits have been able to be analyzed so that we have a very strong case whenever we take our cases uh, to, to the court. Our effort has been supported by the uh, intelligence that we have built. We have enhanced our intelligence and more so with other agencies. We, 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 we ably exchange information and on top of that we've been able to take uh, the advantage of um, the whistleblowing act. We have an act where we actually reward informers. So we take an advantage of that, that the informers um, are able to give us information, of course, open source. They'll give us information, they give us those alerts, and we're able actually to successfully uh, intervene. Thank you so much for that information. Now, Let's talk about the Container Control Program, or CCP. The trafficking of wildlife and forest products is a serious problem in Eastern Africa today. And the CCP was established to tackle this issue. So what trends have emerged during the COVID-19 pandemic? The Container Control Program um is uh, jointly delivered in Eastern and Southern Africa in partnership with the Wildlife and Forest Crime Program. So what we do then is uh, support uh, the countries in building um, enforcement structures, multi-agency enforcement structures uh, composed by customs, police, uh, the wildlife authority, port authority and other relevant uh, institutions that are specific to each country to enhance the detection by uh, building capacity on profiling uh, of commercial documentation uh, on risk-based. Uh, one other key element is also the uh, detection of falsified products from intellectual property rights such as um, uh, fake uh, phones, etc. But most importantly, uh, falsified medicines. And particularly in this time in the context of COVID-19, that becomes an important element with the detection of substandard and falsified products, such as masks um, uh, or um, medicines and uh, different elements that are to be um, contributing to the security of the medical personnel as well as the general population. Thank you very much for that question. I'll start with an appreciation, first of all, that um, uh, the introduction of the container control program has actually uh, supported us and enabled us 
um, have successful hit rates on whatever containers that are coming into the country. And because of that opportunity of them getting that information, they're able to analyze and, and target very well risky containers. And also it has um, enabled our staff to, to be smarter in, in how to handle the alerts that are coming from the container control uh, program unit. And um, uh, in itself also it has boosted our coordination and work relationship with other agencies. Now let's move on to something quite relevant. How has COVID-19 affected your work and what kind of initiatives have you done during this pandemic? Thank you, Waboy. Uh, as an institution, we have been significantly affected uh, by, by COVID-19. Uh, our operations have, have, have been significantly uh, affected. Our revenues have also gone down because we rely on park entry as part of our income. And this has reduced uh, to the tune of 90% because we've got a reduction in, in visitation of our parks, especially with regard to our non-residents who uh, uh, form a very big component of our internal revenues. But as an organization, through our Director General, we've been able to come up with a prevention and coordination committee to manage the COVID-19, which team is able to give direction, guide the organization under the leadership of our Director General to be able to manage this uh, uh, pandemic, especially bear in mind the parks continue to be open even during this uh, season. And we've seen a lot of, 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 of local uh, tourism, especially in Nairobi National Park, and we keep encouraging um, uh, members of the public out there to visit our parks, they're safe. However, as an institution, we've also put in measures to screen and, and, and and check on our staff, sensitize them during this uh, uh, particular period, managing also our little resources that we do have to ensure that we are able to manage this particular pandemic. Our partners, including the UNODC, have also been very useful to ensure that they are also come and hedge against um, any uh, issues that um, uh, come or have been affected, especially during this pandemic period. Traditionally, customs is known um, here in Uganda face-to-face -face interaction and a lot of pa paperwork. Now, because of that, we had to rethink on how to serve our clients. So quickly, we enhanced our help tool where we would only interact with our clients online. Either they, they, they make their declarations usual, but then answering queries, any kind of um, inquiries, they were supposed to do them online. And of, of, of course, that has enabled us begin thinking about change management. How are we going to change the mindset of our staff, the mindset of the business community that the world has been hit, but then we must continue in doing business. We must continue in offering our function in, in the clearance of this cargo. And also we are, we, we are looking at automation. We had so many manual processes that we now want to automate we are automate, automating the, the bonded uh, warehouse stock management uh, process. We are about to conclude on that and, and many other automation that we want to do. Things have, have to change, so even as we must adopt to, to the new, to the changes. And I must say that the staff are, are positive. We are catching up. Even the business community is catching up. So um, with that, also we've now begun seeing a rise in the revenue figures because there has been appreciation that the, way ha the world has changed, we must change. So we're beginning also to see a rise in our revenue figures uh, as at this month. Thank you so much for your answers, which is very helpful and informative. On the last question, um, wildlife and forest crimes are transnational, meaning that they aren't contained within national borders. What are some of the current efforts to address this problem, including the development of information-based tools? We uh, strongly support the international cooperation for investigation, prosecution uh, of cases through uh, building uh, networks for um, 
enforcement and prosecutors uh, to address these wildlife and forest crime uh, cases. And uh, as such, we have the wildlife interregional enforcement meetings, an initiative that has been rolling already for over two years, which brings together prosecutors, investigators, uh, customs officers, financial uh, investigators from uh, countries from Africa um, and uh, Southeast Asia uh, to enhance uh, the, the cooperation between the countries and to establish uh, a network of focal points that can allow for a easier and faster uh, exchange of information leading to improved investigations. Thank you for our speakers for joining this conversation today. For more information, please follow us on Twitter or visit our website. My name is Wamboi Kahara and see you next time.